All right, welcome to the second half of unit four. In chapter five, we're gonna talk about cell biology. We'll start with bacteria, which we'll focus on mainly, and then we'll talk a little bit about eukaryotes, which include us and some eukaryotic parasites that can cause disease. Um, so what is cell biology? Well, it's all about uh, what makes up the cell, what goes on inside of it. Uh, and a lot of the things that we're going to talk about here are what influence the ability of pathogens to get in and cause disease in us. So we'll talk a lot about the main components. We've probably heard of some of these already, and we've talked a little bit about some of the chemical principles behind this. Uh, so we'll see it in action here. So we need to be able to talk about the key parts of a bacterial cell. That's the first order of business. Then we will uh, talk about the function of the bacterial cells parts and kind of how we can target them for antibiotic therapy. Um, so knowing how a bacterial cell is put together allows us to find ways to destroy it, which is ultimately the goal of, of our uh, antibiotics. And then we'll talk about kind of the key parts of the eukaryotic cell um, and talk about not just how uh, eukaryotic pathogens work, but also how they can kind of take advantage of us and our cells to, to get in and hide themselves. Okay, before we begin, though, I wanted to throw in this secret slide for you good video watchers. Uh, the exam question why is it important to understand the differences between human beings and disease-causing microbes when developing treatments for disease? This question is going to show up again. So the, the key thing here is, is that we use the differences between humans and disease-causing microbes to find things that only happen in microbes so we can target them to kill the microbe without killing the human. That's the whole goal of our drug therapies. So... Uh, thank you for watching the video. Uh, this will show up again on a future test. In 5.1, we're going to start with basically an overview of bacterial cells. Um, we'll talk about both the structure and the function of the cell and how it's different from eukaryotic cells. Um, and then we'll talk a little bit about the biochemicals that make up the cell. So remember, when we go back to... At uh, the beginning of the course, we talked about cells are the fundamental unit of life. The cell is the smallest living thing. We group cells into two groups. We have prokaryotic cells. These are the ones without a nucleus, no nuclear membrane in there. Um, pro means before, right? Carrion is kernel, so it's before the kernel. That kernel is uh, the nucleus, so before the nucleus. These are bacteria and archaea. The eukaryotic cells, they have a membrane-bound nucleus in there, and they have lots of other membranes inside of them that form these things called organelles. This is all our other organisms, animals, plants, fungi, protists. Um, so, again, we exploit the differences between prokaryotes and eukaryotes to target bacteria without harming our own cells. That's why it's so much easier to target bacteria than it is eukaryotic parasites. They're much more similar to us in terms of their cell construction. So if we have our fun little cartoon diagram here, here's a eukaryote. See, it's got its nucleus here. It's a little membrane sac, and inside of it is the DNA. Outside of that are some organelles. This is the endoplasmic reticulum. Um, these are the Golgi, and then there's like mitochondria in here. Um, so a lot of membrane inside of the cell, whereas bacteria, they have their a cell wall and then a cell membrane, but no membrane bound compartments inside. They are prokaryotes. Their DNA is kind of floating around. It's not completely disorganized, as we'll see, but it is not bound up in a little sack here. Bacteria have a couple general properties. Um, they have a very complex cell envelope. That's the cell membrane, the cell wall, and any sort of outer layers. This provides protection from the environment. There's lots of stresses in the environment, salty environments, you know, acidic, hot, things like this, and even predators. Yes, there are predators for bacteria. Um, and also the cell envelope can, can secrete toxins or have things that allow bacteria to get into cells in the case of pathogens. 
Bacteria pretty much always have a small genome when we compare them to eukaryotes. Biology is, of course, the science of exceptions, but in general, on average, bacterial genomes are very small. They're super compact circular chromosomes of DNA, and this allows fast replication with limited resources. They have a very small number of genes in there and very little of what we call non-coding DNA. Um, you may have heard of it as junk DNA. It's not really junk, but we have a lot of extra DNA in our cells that kind of slow down our replication time. Bacteria are all about being streamlined, being quick, reproducing real fast. They tightly coordinate their cell parts. All of the components inside there are super efficient for fast replication. Some bacteria, you can get a new generation in 20 minutes, right? It takes us, we gotta develop, reach maturity. The kind of earliest that reproduction theoretically can happen is like in the teens, right? And then uh, the baby takes nine months to develop, right? Bacterium, some of them 20 minutes is their uh, generation time. So they're very quick, they're very fast, they're very efficient. They can reach super high numbers really, really quickly. So they're really efficient for fast replication, but also for evading host defense responses in the case of pathogens. They don't want to get killed by the host cell. If we look at uh, kind of a model here, this is a cartoon diagram of a bacterial cell. Um, if you want to orient yourself, here is a electron micrograph of a bacterial cell. So we have the envelope, that's all the stuff on the outside, the outer layers, the cell wall, the cell membrane, we all call that the envelope. Inside of that is the cytoplasm, and uh, we'll talk about that in a moment. Here's a flagella. Here's some different molecules that are involved. Uh, so there's, there's a lot of stuff going on in here. So let's talk about some of these pieces. Okay, so outside is the, the envelope, then inside is the cytoplasm. Remember, that's kind of like a, a watery gel where all kinds of proteins and other macromolecules uh, are doing chemical reactions. This is all enclosed by the cell membrane, and we'll talk about the organization of membranes in a moment. Down here, uh, we have the DNA, so in here is the cytoplasm, um, all kinds of things happening. RNA is going out, going to ribosomes, being turned into proteins. There's all kinds of proteins doing work. This one called ATP synthase. This is important for bacteria to live. It helps them make ATP, that energy molecule. Uh, so lots of stuff going on in the cytoplasm. The bacterial genome, it's DNA. A genome is all of the DNA in a cell. Uh, bacterial DNA is not just completely free-floating. It actually kind of organizes itself into a region that we call the nucleoid. Now, this is different from the nucleus. I know they sound similar, but they are different. The nucleus has a membrane that's in a eukaryote. In a prokaryote, the nucleoid is just kind of a region where the DNA hangs out in a clump. Um, that keeps it kind of organized. Um, it gets looped and coiled up on some proteins there, um, and it just keeps the, the DNA organized. Um, but there is no membrane surrounding this area, so nucleoid and nucleus are different. So that's the inside, right? We have the nucleoid region where the, the chromosome is, then we have the cytoplasm, then we have the, the cell membrane and the wall and the envelope. Um, outside of the membrane, the uh, cell is enclosed by what we call a cell wall. You don't have a cell wall. Uh, plants and fungi have cell walls. Uh, bacteria have cell walls as well. And in bacteria, this cell wall is made up of a molecule called peptidoglycan. Um, in the case of gram-positive bacteria, they have many, many layers of this peptidoglycan. Um, in gram-negatives, they have a very thin amount of peptidoglycan, but they actually have a second membrane in there, and they have a bunch of molecules called lipopolysaccharides, or they're made up of lipids and polysaccharides, not surprisingly. Um, we don't always name things super originally, but it's very descriptive, isn't it? Um, this layer uh, has some properties that can make uh, gram-negative cells actually very toxic to us. So uh, this peptidoglycan molecule is really critical, and we're going to talk a lot about it in this course because it is unique to bacteria. 
we don't make peptidoglycan. What's that mean? Well, if we find drugs that can target peptidoglycan, you can target bacteria without harming humans. That's huge. And we do have some antibiotics that target it. So when we take all these things together, the cell membrane, the cell wall, and in the case of gram negatives, the outer membrane, we call this the cell envelope. We're going to look at these extensively in this course um, because the gram negatives versus the gram positive, that's how we like group all our bacteria and it makes treatment different. It makes gram staining different so we can identify things. So I will ask you to know how to recognize the difference between them. Gram negatives are pretty easy to, to identify because if you have this cartoon diagram or this electron micrograph, if you see these two lines here, those are membranes. Remember the gram negatives have two cell membranes. They have an inner one and an outer one. And in between that is a super thin layer of peptidoglycan. So inner membrane, peptidoglycan, outer layer. And then there's this LPS that we'll talk about. The LPS, if you kind of disrupt it, like say you kill the bacterial cell, it can release from the cell and basically overstimulates our immune system and it can cause something called toxic shock. It's an endotoxin, we call it. Um, we'll come back to this term later in the course when we talk about the immune system, but this is very uh, dangerous because if you have a high level of gram-negative bacteria in an infection, even if you kill them with antibiotics, it can still cause this toxic shock, which can be deadly to patients. Um, so uh, treating gram negatives is very difficult. When you have the LPS kind of all contained here, it forms kind of a, a slippery mucus layer around the cell that we call a capsule. Uh, this can help resist phagocytosis by white blood cells. So your white blood cells are immune cells. They go out and they try and find bacteria and engulf them and degrade them, right? Destroy them. Well, this capsule, it's kind of like slippery stuff on the outside and it prevents the cells from grabbing them, right? They just slip off. So this LPS, kind of bad for us in two different ways here. So that's gram negatives. Gram positive, on the other hand, they only have one uh, cell membrane, so the cell membranes here, but they have a really thick layer of peptidoglycan. And this is where the difference between them in the gram stain comes in. Remember this thick layer of peptidoglycan, that will hold the crystal violet stain in. And the gram positive cells will keep that purple stain in here and stay purple. Whereas the gram negatives, they ended up pink, right? Because they couldn't retain the purple stain. So they have a lot of peptidoglycan and that'll hold the crystal violet stain. Again, we'll come, we'll come back and we'll do this again just to reiterate. But these cell walls, uh, they kind of form like a cage around the bacteria. And that's not just for protection from uh, things like host immune defenses. That's also protection from the environment. Remember we talked about osmosis in chapter four, that movement of ions and water. Uh, in bacteria, they don't get to choose where they live really. Uh, they may have to survive in a very salty environment where it's trying to suck water out of their cell or they might survive in a low salt environment and water's trying to rush into their cell and their cell could burst. This cell wall kind of is a protective cage that helps their cells uh, prevent swelling uh, and bursting or shriveling too much. So the cell wall is not just for protection from immune systems uh, or predators, uh, it's protection from the environment as well. Okay, so, uh, that's kind of the, the quick overview of the bacterial cell. It's protected by that thick envelope on the outside, uh, protects it from pathogens, from phagocytosis, by macrophages, um, and from the environment. It The envelope includes the cell membrane and the cell wall. Uh, gram negatives, remember, they have two membranes, um, and the uh, gram positive only have one cell membrane. The DNA, the chromosome in bacteria, is kind of coiled up in a region that we call the nucleoid. This is not the nucleus again. 
That's where DNA replication occurs, uh, RNA transcription and protein synthesis. They all can happen at the same time because uh, nothing is kind of restricted from the rest of the cell. So again, this is all for bacteria to live and divide very, very quickly. The proteins that are present in the cell, what's in there and what's going on, it's going to depend on the species of bacteria, but also the environment that it's in. Uh, bacteria can change what proteins they're making depending on where they are. Uh, if they live in a hot environment, they might make some different proteins than if they're in a cold environment. Or if they're in the human body versus outside, they may or may not be making certain proteins. So this is something that we'll talk about again. It's called gene regulation. That means uh, bacteria can make proteins to respond to their environment. Again, we'll come back to that concept. I just want to introduce it here. The biochemical composition of a bacteria, well, of course, we have nucleic acids, proteins, phospholipids, and sugars, right? And there's all kinds of other molecules in there. Um, kind of the chemistry of these molecules is really what determines if a pathogen can cause disease. So we're really interested in what's going on inside bacterial cells uh, to know how to treat and prevent disease. All right, that's it for 5.1.